Hi guys, and welcome to this series on how to publish your Chrome extension to the web store. I'm Jack. And I'm Amy. And we are here to help you through the process. In the last video, we talked about why we need to explain our extension and how an extension should have a single purpose. We learned how to explain each permission in the manifest JSON file and what is considered remote code. Now that we have explained our Chrome extension to the Chrome Store developer team, we are ready to distribute. In this episode, we will talk about What are the Chrome Store payment methods? Different ways to publish your extension Distributing to specific regions And the stats and ratings tabs Okay, let's get started. Let's talk about pricing. How does it work? So as you can see, currently the pricing and payment information can only be added in the old dashboard. The Chrome Web Store payment method offers the following in-app payments, one-time charge, subscription, and a limited trial version of the item. We are including a link in the description to the official documentation. Please note that this is not the only way you can monetize your extension. There are other services available you can use to manage the payments or even add a donation button. Okay, let's talk about the different options to publish your extension. You can publish your extension in three different ways. Public, unlisted, and private. So public makes sense. It will be available in the Chrome Web Store. That's right. Your extension will be searchable in the Google Chrome Store. Okay, so Enlisted says only people with the link can see it. But here it says the extension can be found if you do a Google search, so I guess it's not very private. Correct. Right now, I'm not sure if it's a bug or a feature, but the fact is that your Unlisted extension can be searched in Google. So if you only wish to share it with a select group of people, your best option is to choose door number three, private. So I remember we talked about private publishing for your beta group testers. Correct. If you select private right now, you can see that the default is for your beta tester group. However, if you only want to distribute these to, let's say, a business that has 10 people and they're going to be using this as a tool, then you can click on the bottom. It says none, but you can choose, you can create a Google group and um, Share it just for those people. So it looks like distribution is simply the countries you want your extension to be available to. That's right. If you, can, if you scroll down, you can see all the countries um, listed. So you can choose all region, which is the default, or you can deselect and choose specific ones. So let's take a quick look at the stats and ratings tabs. Okay, so in the stats tab, you can see statistics by daily installs, daily uninstalls, daily impressions, and weekly users. You can also filter these statistics by region, language, and operating system. You can also filter them by item version and enabled or disabled. Um, you can export any of these stats on the as a CSV file, um, just for your records. Okay, let's look at the ratings. Basically, you can have a look at a summary of your ratings. Right now, we only have one review and one rating, so not much to see here. So if you want to add Clip64 Decoder, you can go install this and we will uh, have more numbers here. Okay guys, this is the last episode in this series on how to upload a Chrome extension to the Chrome Web Store. Thanks for joining us through each step. Please check out our other short tip videos on how to troubleshoot the new dashboard. But not to worry, all major theme parks have had delays. When they opened Disneyland in 1956, nothing worked. Nothing. 
Many more videos coming soon, like Chrome Extensions 101. What's the Chrome Store reviewing process like? And much more. See you next time! Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.